If you have been exposed to leftist internet behavior, even looking at them from the outside, you probably are left wondering, what the hell? Why do they behave in those cult-like, almost 1984 manner? Why do they all look and talk the exact same way? And most importantly, what drives their behavior? Now, there have been a couple of people trying to address this question before me, often damning it down to a sense of self-fulfillment and a status boosting by way of virtue signaling, and as true as it may be on the surface, this is not the only factor that guides their behavior. I'll start off by stating a few simple facts, precisely how people who follow political ideologies differ, and immediately I should tell you that you would not be able to virtue signal if you were on the right as much as you can on the left, and there are legitimate reasons for it. What's important to grasp, besides social trends of what is virtuous, is that ideology has a joint relationship with moral beliefs, as reported by Jonathan Haidt. This theory is called the moral foundation theory, and as you can see, the right is pretty balanced on all moral beliefs, while the left is pretty high in care and fairness, but is low in purity, liberty, authority, and loyalty. Those qualities do influence leftist behavior, and as a consequence, their ideology revolves around that. Another thing that is worth noting is that much of the left and leftist communities online in particular are defined by some degree of mental illness and neuroticism, as research by Emil Kierkegaard and many others have confirmed. Another thing to point out is that white leftist women are especially prone to mental instability, as the latest report taken from Pew Research confirms that over 56% of them have some form of a mental condition. This means that whenever you see a white woman who is young and leftist, there's a 56% chance that she's mentally unstable, and that mental instability guides her other behavior, such as adopting a form of ideology that is associated with neuroticism. Maybe that's why they are willing to pay money to some BIPOC to lecture them how racist they are over a family dinner. A pretty interesting article, let me tell you that. So, to summarize the first part of the video, there are certain conditions that influence their group behavior, and as I said, part of that is high neuroticism and their moral foundations. Nobody's practicing a BDSM scene, it's literally just a twink in a jock strap and a leather harness with a hanky in his pocket. Like, that's it, or not his pocket, hanging out of his jock strap, you know? Now, the most interesting part what really makes them act like a cult or a very tribal group? so uniformly and so selective and afraid of any criticism. To answer that question, it is important to understand how groups are formed in the first place and, of course, why they are needed. Interestingly enough, there is an overwhelming consensus among different social theories that explain this, and it can be dumbed down to fulfilling a sense of belonging, coalition creation, and social functioning. Leftists online or offline spaces obey those same rules of social organization, and according to social identity theory, we began to identify ourselves with a group and the group with ourselves. This is why you may say something negative about an identity group which another person belongs to, even saying that this has nothing to do with them, and frankly you don't consider them to be a part of that identity group, they will take offense because for them a line of me and us does not exist. And henceforth, a group defines people's identities, and it is the primary explanation why it is the case that those avatars are like a uniform for online leftist spaces. This is their way of showing that they belong into an identifiable group, as people who name their children according to their national identity, or post LGBTQ or super straight flags in their Twitter bios. This is their way of signaling their tribal belonging or, in the case of super straight, trolling. What also is a good way to signal identity belonging is to signal an opposition to another tribal group, for instance, consider this old woman. Going outside maskless with other vaccinated adults. It's really wonderful and freeing, but at the back of your mind is this idea that, oh my god, what if people think I'm a Republican or, god forbid, a Trump supporter? I've been wearing my mask dangling from my ear as some kind of signal. <laughs> 
Because masks are now reinterpreted as an identifiable characteristic of those who are in the leftist camp, and possibly it is also a status and conformity signal, another reason why this woman is so afraid of being labeled a Republican is because they are associated with low social status and as a consequence are a marginalized identity that is unattractive in social spaces which is the primary reason why you never see those people with MAGA hats signaling their identity in the open, unless you live in some rural conservative area. Moreover, much of the individual interactions between leftists and right-wingers are often hostile and almost in all cases this is the fault of the left. As Jonathan Haidt has pointed out, left does not understand what conservatives are all about, constantly strawmanning and misinterpreting them, while conservatives are always more accurate in describing the positions of a liberal or a leftist. Although it is attributed to the moral foundation differences between the ideologies arguing that it is because conservatives are balancing their moral foundations, I find that group polarization also plays some role in that as well. Most leftists live in echo chambers, rarely being exposed to people with different views, but in the past it was not a thing, and liberals were more tolerant of freedom of speech and were open-minded, unlike conservatives who themselves lived in some sort of a Christian morality enclaves throughout the country being afraid of questioning their god. But things do change, and now the left is highly associated with authoritarianism, as the newest study had reported, left-wing authoritarianism is increasingly a thing, and here is what they are authoritarian about. And if you have an IQ of over 95, you would be smart enough to realize that left-wing authoritarianism has nothing to do with that stupid political compass test that I did a video about actually, and in fact, if it had to do something with it, left-wing authoritarianism would be in the bottom left green corner if we evaluate their answers. Moreover, the same study had reported a few negative correlations with agreeableness, conscientiousness, honesty and humility, cognitive reflectivity, self-direction, while reported higher positive correlations for conformity, violence, dogmatism, emotionality, psychopathy and social vigilantism. Who could have thought, right? And it is those reasons that contribute to group polarization and consequently to group thing. As whenever some late night talk show host says something stupid, there is nobody to challenge him and everyone around them seems to buy into this bullshit. A random person as a result of peer pressure buys into that as well, signaling their obedience to the commonly accepted moral codes in the future. Because it is manifested by a person of authority. And this this process is called over-socialization, a phenomenon that is fairly common among the middle class and the highly socialized segment of our population, as Theodor Kaczynski claims. But the leftist online spaces, however, are even more over-socialized as the prior segment of the population because they obey another form of authority, an authority that they perceive as the right side of history, that their opinion leaders claim is the way forward before they are cancelled due to some form of a heresy. High over-socialization with the idea that they are moving history into the right direction truly unleashes their hands that allows them to manifest extra smugness and vigilantism while they are interacting with a side that is opposing them. They are especially smug and often experiencing cognitive dissonance and anger when people who disagree with them reject their sacred values that are foundational to their group's identity as they are both high in neuroticism and moralizing. The ironic moment is that while they think that they are the underdog that challenges the dominant structures of our society, such as having many white male owners of business companies and fewer women in politics, ultimately leftists manufacture our culture and rule our institutions, shaping the rest of the population in a way that best suits them. In other words, they are nothing but a product of their time and place that is shaped by dominant customs and beliefs that govern a population with, of course, some little slight genetic correlations. To prove my point even further and expand on their groupthink behavior, those same leftist online spaces can as easily advocate for P-word, which is not polyamorous,
memory but other sexual identity slash orientation if it is perceived as a new civil rights movement and the right side of history nonsense, as they both love unlimited and unrestricted sexualities and are low in purity, it is no surprise. I don't see that not appealing to them, considering just recently they were defending children in BDSM parades and being sexualized. Of course, five years ago it would have been done on some obscure internet spaces, but when a cult leader such as Big Joel or Kate Black openly advocate for it, it is much easier to follow them and join whatever they perceive as the winning force. Those shifts, as I would argue, are pretty common and as long as some of their leaders began adopting a new opinion, their followers would adopt it as well, because they perceive it to be morally right, because it came from their own tribe and aligns with their moral foundations and their neuroticism. Eventually, those who descend from the newly accepted value, especially if it is sacred, they become outcasts in their group such as J.K. Rowling and, frankly, most of the feminists of today. As long as they deviate from something a group considers to be sacred, they are done for and will be cancelled. Surely, you can adopt some of their identities, like being a lesbian and a few of their positions, and even their way of communication, such as saying yikes and listening to their kinds of music. As long as you have your own opinion on something they consider to be sacred, you are in trouble. To best measure the extent of over-socialization is by the degree of group homogeneity. If a bunch of people in a group have the same styled profile pictures and the same way of talking, not even speaking of having the same opinions, which correlates with high conformity, you can consider this group to be over-socialized. On the other hand, if a group possesses little common characteristics across a variety of measures, this group is under-socialized. The extent of leftism can be properly measured by this type of conformity, with the former over-socialized groups being cult-like and high neuroticism, while the latter ones typically are not under the constant influence of peer pressure and you can have an open dialogue with them. In the end, I should say that the extent of over-socialization and group conformity could be applied to other groups as well. However, what matters is the extent of over-socialization and, frankly, there are very unique elements to the left which do not exist in significance if we look at any other group. Such elements include virtue signaling, not understanding the other side, and not willing to listen to it, and sympathizing based off of shared mental illnesses and deviatory behaviors which underline their social organizing. Well, I hope that has cleared your mind regarding leftist social organizing and answered some of your questions.